imagine I have kept a bit of the really brittle stuff from earlier and I wanted my blade, my plasticine katana to be capable of holding a razor's edge so I could cut the wings off of a flying flight or some equally amazing feat that again only medieval samurai were capable of doing and in the west we were hitting each other with giant lumps of metal none of which is true but it's kind of what medieval not medieval me I'm not that old what teenage me kind of thought now you take more care than this I'm just trying to show a process quickly in plasticine so imagine there is my really brittle piece of hardened steel and not my wibbly wobbly bit of plasticine I take my original blade and I've done whatever clever stuff I'm doing to this I should say so you may need it like this you might not but I take my original back piece and I split it like that and again this is why I say plasticine is so useful particularly for fledgling blacksmiths with no equipment you can learn the principles of a process long before having to learn how to hit the metal and hold it when it's hot and so on you can just get to grips with so much I'm not too far. And yeah, they use this process for axe heads and so on. You can see it in a lot of tools. Give me one second. Let me get this old hammer I've got. Give them a little dust off. Let's see if there's a particular. Ah, there we go. That's a good one. And if I bring that up to the light, you can see two different types of material are in this. You've got the hardened bit here goes about that far down into the hammer and then the normal iron here. You can see there's a definite line there. If I catch it in the light you'll see it really well. And it's a way of saving material. I'll turn it different ways you might see it. There you go. You can see there's like a little bit here that comes down and the same on the other side I've drawn it with my pen there like that that's a very common technique for making sure when you weld them together that they stick and stick well you can see it really well there here So this is a common technique is what I'm saying. Find it on axes, anything where a strong edge is needed. What you can do, if you make a wedge with this, different techniques, blacksmiths turning in their graves, get upset with me, and you create a hot dog. And then you tamp that back down at a fire, at a welding temperature of course. You want it in a bit further than that, but it's plasticine and not a masterclass, it's just YouTube. And you bring that down, and then obviously those two weld together. You might do a bit more preparation than I've done here, you might have taken that down a bit, but you get the idea. And then as that is drawn out, I'm not going to make a plasticine katana, or maybe I should. Um, as that is drawn out further and further, this is more of an axid proportion. Like I say, I'm not a master swordsmith or a master plasticine smith. But you can see slowly how if I draw that down. Try and create something 
it's interesting to look at at least. The joys of plasticine as opposed to actual steel. But you can see, look, how you've put in that sharpened edge. Now, if that was an axe, you can see you've got a decent chopping edge with some weight behind it. If it was a sword and you drew it nicely out and you put all this uh, material in there, you can see how when that's ground back, it reveals more and more of the sharper edge. And in fact, the, the, the Japanese guys don't have wonderful art. And you can with any metal, but it was a, it was a great art of Japanese source. But this, the sharpening and polishing was another master altogether, I think. And this would reveal these lovely wavy lines uh, coming down there. The hammer, I, I don't know, that's springing to mind, but I might have that wrong. But if we cut this, hopefully... There we go. You can see how you've got that nice sharp uh, edge in there, which is revealed on the side. So when you grind all of this extra away, or you're shaping it and you're doing the stuff, you can see how you end up with that very brittle bit forming the edge of your axe or your blade or whatever it is. And you're able to sharpen this bit and it'll hold its edge really well and then you get the lovely weight of this and the artistry of the two metals meeting there and the different metals when this is cut away or, or etched away sorry with a bit of acid and that's how you do it so there you go a little video for me if ever there's a time machine invented i can go back and talk to 16 17 year old me and explain that the japanese swordsmiths of old while masters of their craft weren't wizards they weren't creating swords capable of splitting atoms. Um, whatever else I thought they were able to do, they were just masters of the technology of their time, which can now be recreated, much to their annoyance, I suspect, in plasticine. So there you go. A couple of things to take away from it. It is possible to get like one and a half million um, folds quite easily. They weren't doing it along the whole length of the sword. They were doing it on the block to begin with. And if you're a fledgling blacksmith, plasticine. The cheapest material to work with, in my opinion, to start to understand how metal moves. You can, you know, hit your hammers and just... It does the same thing, but with a fraction of the force, obviously. And you can start to understand how real steel moves under the hammer. There you go. Hopefully that was interesting. Not too much burbling from me. That was intended to only be a two, three minutes long. I suspect knowing me, it's about six or seven hours long. But I shall take this plasticine and stick it in the fold in their box, ready for another project when I need to learn how to use it.